Jesus is the answer for the world today. Hi, and welcome to Christian Pentecostal Church Daily Devotional. I'm Rafina Antonetti. My title message today is Taste and See. And we're going to be reading from Psalms 34, 8. And it says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. In context of the Psalms, David found protection from the Lord, and he had evidence of God's goodness. And now he's saying to others to experience the goodness of the Lord for themselves. It is used here in the sense of making a trial of or testing by experience. So what was it that David experienced that convinced him that others needed to experience God as well? At the time, David was running away from Saul, who was after him to kill him. Now, his fear for Saul made him run to Gath and put himself under the protection of Amemelech, the king of Gath. So, But soon after, the servants of the king recognized him, and they said, wait a minute, isn't, is, this is David. I mean, they, they sang songs about him. They sang about how Saul had killed his thousands, but David had killed his ten thousands. Now, once David heard this, he became fearful and anxious. And he was afraid that now they might hand him over. They might betray him and hand him over back over to Saul. So he pretended to be mad. He pretended to be crazy. He was scratching at the doorpost and letting saliva come down his beard and everything. And so while this did save him and keep him from being delivered to Saul, the king was not willing to keep David around. And so David left and he found refuge in the caves of uh, Adullam. And we could find that story in first Tim, in first Samuel chapters 21 and 22. So here in the Psalms, he praises God for his deliverance. He doesn't take credit because he, he decided to disguise himself as a, as a madman. And, and that's why he was saved. I mean, we, we see it all in the first part of of the Psalms where he says, I bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord and the, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. I magnify the Lord uh, with me and let, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Now, this is a man that was grateful and knew where his deliverance had come from. But here in Psalms 34, 8, he says, taste. And so the word here, taste, is ta'am. And it means to taste or to perceive, to eat. But it also means to try the flavor of, to perceive the flavor, to partake, to enjoy to feel, to make a trial of the experience, right? So when we take something in and it tastes and it tastes good and it feels good, then you can experience that goodness, correct? But if you never take it in, you will never know what it tastes like. And so you won't know whether it's good or not. So when God created us, he gave us a digestive system to be able to eat and drink and satisf satisfy our souls. Now, this is good, but our taste buds allows us to distinguish bad food from good food. In the same manner, his word helps us to understand good from evil and right from wrong. But how will we know that if we do not digest his word? If we do not take in his word, how will we know the difference, right? And then we have the word see, to see is the word is raha, and it means to look at, to inspect, to consider, to discern, to spy. But what what was what's more incredible to me is that it means to know. Now, to know what? To know anything? To know? To get knowledge? To understand? But also, this word raha, it mean it's a word for the shepherd, because it's also comes from the three Hebrew letters that means head strength, 
the name of uh, um, the Alpha and also a covenant of life, a breath. And so we see that it, the shepherd builds a corral to keep his livestock together and is able to see them from every angle so he can observe his, his sheep and know where they are and keep them from harm. So through this experience, he gains wisdom. He knows which sheep will stray, which sheep will not, which sheep are, are, are sick, and so on. And as we know, David was a shepherd. So it's not a surprise that he would want his people to taste and see God's goodness, that he would want his people to surround themselves with the goodness of God. And so the word of God helps us to see God's will for our lives. And it helps us to distinguish between the, the spirit and the flesh. So when we take it in by reading it, and we chew it by meditating upon it. As it slowly goes down, it, it is, is breaking down and it starts, and we start to experience God's wisdom and his knowledge and his understanding. And it energizes us and it gives us the power to block the fiery darts of the enemy. And it stores in our memory so that we in the future can be a witness and testify and preach about God's goodness. It empowers us and makes us strong. So think about it this way. In the natural, if we take in food that is good and healthy for our system, then we benefit from that intake. We live longer, we live stronger, we live healthier. However, if we eat fatty foods and unhealthy foods, it starts to break down our digestive system negatively and it creates blockages in our intestines, in our heart, in our arteries. So it's it's really no different in the spiritual sense. If you start reading and digesting books outside of the, the principles of God, then your spiritual system will get clogged up with false doctrines and false teachings, which we really need to be careful of. Because folks, the Bible is the infallible word of God. Look what Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. When we study and we are healthy Christians, then that which comes out after we've digested it properly will be a sweet aroma unto the Lord and to others. But for those who are perishing, it's going to be a stench, unfortunately. So normally, when it comes to food, the average person tends to look at it first. And it, and when it looks good enough, then they'll eat it. Like me. I will not, I will, I will look at food. I have to see what it looks like. You can't tell me, close, close, close your eyes and, and taste this. You can't. Because I won't do it. Okay. I have to be able to taste. I have to be able to see it first. But here the word says, taste it first and then you will see. So what are we tasting? When we read and we consume the word of God, we will begin to clearly see the goodness of God and all he has for us and all he has done for us. And we will be strengthened in every way. We will learn to trust God more as he reveals himself more and more. Um, and, and the more that we taste, the fuller we get of knowledge, the, the fuller we get of wisdom and the more understanding we gain, which draws us closer to the Lord and helps us to see his goodness more. David urged his people to taste and see, to try him, to experience him for themselves, not just to take his word for it. In Matthew Henry, a commentary from Matthew Henry says, and I quote, Our spiritual experiences brings, uh, bring us to spiritual enlightenment and understanding. And David desired others to taste and see, and he wanted them to experience what he had experienced so that they can know what he had come to know, the soul sustaining goodness of the Lord. And so in Psalms 34, it goes on to outline examples of God's incredible goodness to those who take refuge in him. He takes care of their every need, verses 8 through 10. 
He provides for them with a good long life, verses 11 through 15. He is with them through troubles and saves them from their enemies, verses 17 through 22. Those who taste and see that the Lord is good will know his provision. And believers in Jesus experience tastes of God's goodness and grace when we observe the beauty of his, his creation or recognize his blessings of provision, protection, and care. We taste and see his goodness when we contemplate his holiness and infinite righteousness. We delight in his goodness when we appreciate the cost of Christ's sacrifice for our salvation. End quote. So in other words, if we could get people to try this Jesus we talk about and help them to enter in and help them to really understand and experience who he is, then maybe they would have the same appreciation of it that we have. And they would engage truly in the service of the Lord. But it only happens by tasting and seeing his word and knowing that his word is truth and nothing but the truth. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. Until we meet again, Shalom.